All right, guys, we're back at the reloading bench again, and I wanted to show you guys my roll crimping jig. I'll show you how I put a roll crimp on shot shells. So today I'm going to be making a few slugs. I've got some standard, uh, just federal target loads. I think it's uh, some seven and a half shot. Ounce and an eighth, seven and a half shot. So I'm cutting the top off of these, dumping it out into my little shot container, and then uh, what I have left is the wad. I pull the wad out and I cut it down. Uh, depending on the choke of your shotgun, uh, you may be able to just throw a slug inside the wad, but because of uh, the choke on both of my shotguns. I've been cutting down the wad and uh, I'm just leaving just the base plate of the wad. If I can get this stupid thing out of here. So I just got this little base plate. I just cut all the little wings off of it. Just leave just the base plate. Just leave just enough of the sides so that my slug nestles in it. Doesn't quite hold it or retain it, but then I just set it in there. Uh, and then I've got these uh, nitro cards, 12 gauge nitro cards. They're like a overshot wad or an over uh, powder wad or a spacer, uh, depending on what you use them for. But I got them just to use for. Uh, like an overshot card and so I seat my uh, slug in there good into my wad base and then I'm ready for my little jig and so what I did is I just took just a piece of uh, a log just a little tiny piece of log I took a three quarter inch drill bit paddle bit and I drilled down in there just like a little over a quarter of an inch, maybe almost three eighths, and uh, tried to smooth it out. And then uh, I took and drilled a hole as close to center as I could on the backside, and put a dowel in there, and glued it in place. And so I chuck it up in my drill. And how this works? I just stick this shot shell into the uh, roll crimper jig and I just start spinning it and applying pressure to the shot shell. As you can see uh, it's a little bit off balance you know it's not perfect. I was just in a hurry to do this see if it would even work. Um, it's got a little bit of a wobble to it but it actually works pretty good. And the heat and the friction begins to roll over that edge and so I just slowly apply pressure as I'm going forward. If you go too fast, you'll melt it off and it can make a little bit of a mess and leaves a, some gunk on the edges and it might hang up in your uh, cylinder when you're trying to cycle. And so I try to just take my time and, and make it as smooth as I can. So. Closer. So we got a pretty good uh, roll over on it. I got good uh, good tension on that slug. I'm gonna go just a little further. So this is about where I like to have it. So there's just it's nice and tight up against that. And uh, I cycled these through my shotgun, and they feed really well. And matter of fact, they probably feed uh, better than a regular two and three quarter shell because they're just a little bit more rounded um, they're even a just a fuzz shorter but they that doesn't seem to affect the cycling in uh, either of my pump action guns I've got a Smith & Wesson um, and then I've also got a uh, Winchester so and then I'll just label this overshot card with a S so I'll know it's a slug and I do the same thing with buckshot. 
I got some triple lot buck uh, that I throw in these. I'll throw six. It only fits six with an overshot card on there. These are great target slugs and uh, uh, there's plenty of power to shoot a deer with or something at close range. But it really makes for an affordable slug and uh, any other improvised shotgun shells. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe.